This time we're going to call Matthew Romberg here, uh, representing uh, himself, testifying against the bill. Good evening. My name is Matthew Romberg. I'm a um, board certified obstetrician gynecologist with a private practice, solo practice in Round Rock, and here today to say my opposition to what number is this? 60? Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Um, I think the, and I don't have any prepared statement, which is obvious, um, but uh, I wanted to come here and just remind authors of these bills um, that claim to be interested in the health of women that maybe it would be in their interest to talk to individuals who do nothing but deal with the reproductive health of women on a daily basis. And um, to share, and I know this has been stated over and over again, likely in the Senate hearings and hopefully in the hearings for this, that the safety of abortion relative to carrying a pregnancy to term is amazing, and I'd like to throw some numbers. And thank God I'm not getting these numbers from the USA Today. <laughs> <laughs> but instead, from the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, my governing body. So for every 10 constituents that perhaps would call and complain that they were suffering some type of mental illness from having had an abortion procedure, that there are 13 constituents that are complaining of the same thing after they have carried a baby to term. For every 10 women that have had a bladder infection following an abortion procedure, that there are, in fact, 18 women complaining of the same problem following carrying a baby to term. For every 10 women that are suffering from an obstetrical infection, an infection inside their uterus following an abortion procedure, there are 52 women complaining of the same or being diagnosed with the same problem following the delivery of a baby at term. For every 10 women that have had a postpartum hemorrhage following a abortion procedure, that there are 52 women complaining of the same procedure, or excuse me, the same um, complication following carrying a baby to term. For every 10 women that are complaining of bleeding prior to an abortion procedure, there are 250 women having bleeding before the delivery of their child. This number, these numbers go on. There is not a single complication from abortion that is not worse with a woman that carries a baby to term. So when you sit up here at the Capitol, and promote the health of women and state that that is your primary purpose. Please, start Please get up. the details. I'm wrapped up. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for your testimony. We've had a lot of um, discussion well, at, on tonight and around this bill in other proceedings um, talking about the health of women and, and uh, your credential to talk about that. And I'm sorry I had to step out uh, for a moment. So I missed the beginning of your testimony. Um, could you just in a couple seconds? I think I think the gist of my testimony, again, as an obstetrician gynecologist, is that when the the preface of we're doing we're trying to pass this bill for because we're concerned about the safety of women undergoing these procedures, and that's I simply stated that there is never a uh, or that these procedures in these facilities, not not amplified to an ambulatory surgical care setting, um, are still exceedingly and always safer than a woman carrying a baby to term. And when we talk about telling these patients the truth, it's just and the, my point was I just wanted to simply throw out some numbers I to see. try to explain that. Okay, because um, I was looking at. Uh, I, I, it's not been proven that we that there is a need to go to such a high level other than as the, what Lieutenant Governor Dewhurst said was we were trying to reduce 
we're purposefully trying to work to get it down to five clinics or less, um, I'd imagine. But, uh, but so I, I haven't heard any evidence from uh, the state or, or anyone else that, 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 that's credible, that's peer reviewed, that, that talks about the need to do this. Okay, that, I wanted to hear that. I, I wanted to, to I just, I'm so curious as to why this is such such an important issue that has to be heard in a special session. Um, and uh, also, my concern is about um, the cost and about, you know, how much, what what will happen to women when they can't access uh, the abortion care when, when for whatever purposes, um, and, and so, can you speak to that? I mean, you, in your practice. In relative to my practice, I guess it'd be probably too hard to. Or your training, or I mean, just your experience. I'm just, sure. just experience in general, and I think um, repeating what has been said by some of the other witnesses tonight, abortions will still happen. And the worst thing in the world um, is if the if they if they don't have the facilities to go to, whether they're in. El Paso or Lubbock or Laredo, they can't they can't come to the major centers which we have the privilege of, of being at right now. It's still going to happen, and the last thing in the world we want them to do is go to Doctor Google to figure out how to do this. Doctor YouTube. And there's YouTube. and there's also um, chemical, uh, uh, so-called pharmacological. Remedies that that, exactly. that cause me great great concern as well yeah. that are not part of my medical training in El Paso. You know, mm -hmm. being exposed to women who are trying to induce their labor with a special kind of tea. Right, that's what I was talking By about. By the way, don't drink it. <laughs> hey, members, Thank you. any other questions? Uh, well, Mr. Chairman, I received a letter. I wanted to ask the doctor. I received a letter from eight doctors from San Antonio today in opposition to this. They couldn't be here, so I want to thank you for being here. Doctor, I've heard on several occasions from people who are supportive of this bill, and I don't. One of the things I want to I want to uh, thank you for, and and I I think it'd be a little easier to 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 manage this very difficult subject because I heard it said earlier today, and 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 I don't believe anybody gets up one day and says, "Gee, I'd like to have an abortion someday," you know. Therefore, I think we, I'd like to take the, and I want to thank you for taking the sort of the judgmental aspect out of this, and, and, but I want to ask you the question. I've heard it's important to protect, help women, protect women's health. So in your opinion, based on what you've said today, is it your professional opinion that these bills somehow help improve the health of women in Texas, or were they seeing what the net effects of not having or reducing the number of safe locations, would it potentially decrease the potential health for women across the state? No question that that the um, that it will be worse. It would be worse for women. Absolutely. In Texas. I, I mean, we can go through it statistically. You know, whether that results in more term deliveries. You know, it's as simple as that to women who can't get access won't carry through this pregnancy in any way and as we we joked about going to the internet let's figure this out on YouTube thank you doctor thank you mr All right. uh, thank you for your testimony dr Lombard. Jeffrey Patterson Texas Catholic Conference of Bishops here to testify for the bill okay we'll show uh, mr. Patterson see here we'll show him uh, uh, at this point for the bill not testifying. Uh, uh, Connie McCrary here uh, representing herself uh, testifying for the bill. Okay. Connie here, I will show Connie McCrary uh, uh, for the bill not testifying. John Lawson, uh, uh, representing himself, for the bill. And I, I have you uh, uh, as a pa the pastor of the Children of God. Yes. Yes, I am uh, John Lawson. I am pastor of Children of God Ministry. We in, I'm in the heart of uh, South Dallas. And um, 
I am for this bill, and, and in fact, I am for every pro-life bill that y'all might even consider because we haven't talked about the, the fact that black kids are being lynched. We thought that lynching was over, and it's not over. Planned Parenthood, the number one abortion provider in America, set up 80% of their facilities in my neighborhood. They're killing black babies, going and coming. And it's a racist thing that's going on because Margaret Sainer hated black people. She recorded the fact. She wrote about the fact that she hated black people and that black people would be better off if they were not born. So Planned Parenthood and all these abortion clinics, we only 10% of the population, but 40% of all abortions are taking place in my neighborhood. And this has got to stop. So everything we can do to stop this murder from going on, here these women are talking about uh, themselves. And nobody is talking about the murder of these innocent babies. And I think that's a travesty. The man said that we are no longer a Christian nation. But when you have people, you have problems, you solve the problems, and you have progress. And the, the solution to the problem is not to murder your baby and think that you can make progress. The Bible says, with the same measure that ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. If we so murder, we got bad things to look forward to in Texas and in this country. And I think that we should return to our Christian values and stop talking about women as though they are irresponsible. They don't have to have sex. We've got laws against rape. So when you decide that you're going to go have sex, and then the consequences of having sex is that you get pregnant, then you decide you're going to take another step to murder this child as a solution to your problem. It is an evil concept, and we got to stop it. And that's my speech. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor Lawson. Once again, I want to remind uh, uh, everyone here that only uh, those with capital media credentials will be allowed to film um, film uh, uh, this hearing, and I respectfully point out, if these guidelines are not followed, uh, we're going to ask you to leave, so uh, that's the last one I'm going to give on this subject, okay? Uh, at this time, the uh, chair is going to call up. Uh, Connie McCrary, are, are, are you here now? Connie is here uh, representing herself for the bill. And as a reminder, when you hear the when you hear the beep go off, three minutes, we're we're, we're trying to wrap it up because we've got uh, the list continues to grow. I understand. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, committee members. Thank you for uh, letting me be here. My name is Connie McCrary. I'm here in favor of a House Bill 60. Heard a lot of testimony. I was born to a woman who got pregnant at 17 against her will. She made the decision for life instead of death, my life. She made a decision for adoption, and love and life prevailed. I've heard, reg heard testimony regarding the regulations that are be followed. My testimony is those are not being done. 1992, I made a decision to have an abortion because I felt I had no other choice. I felt uh, fearful, and I didn't know where else to turn. I lived in Waco, drove myself to Denton, checked in, was not asked for any ID, was not asked for any age, gave a fake name, fake Social Security number, the rule at the time was that you, they counseled you on day one, and on day two they did the procedure. Within 30 minutes of being at the office, I was on the table. I disclosed that I had a heart condition. The medication they give me, gave me caused me to crash. The pain was unimaginable. After they revived me, I was bleeding like crazy. They went ahead and finished the procedure, put me in a recovery room, sitting up in a leather chair, walked me off the table, sat me in a leather chair for 30 minutes, put me in a car, 
to drive myself back to Waco by myself. They did not care about me as a woman. HB 60 will help ensure these types of things do not happen again. Now, through the redemptive power of Christ, I'm able to coach and mentor and counsel women who are still dealing with 20-plus years of guilt because no matter what we say about choice, there is still a stigma in our society that abortion is wrong and women carry that guilt and the silence with them for life. In the book of Joshua, God sent Joshua to fight and destroy Jericho. It is historically and archaeologically proven the reason God wanted Jericho destroyed was in the walls of Jericho were found the cisterns with the remains of children who had been sacrificed to the God with a little g, Molech. God will not stand for the murder of children. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony.